VO2 Max. Just hearing the word Max might already have given you shivers, right? It sounds intense, like running a marathon at full tilt. And if the idea of working out at Max freaks you out, or if you don't know what VO2 Max is, don't worry, this video has you covered. I'm here to show you a super simple way to calculate it without needing to even break a sweat. But the question is, is it accurate? All right, so quickly, what is VO2 max and why should you care about it? Simply put, VO2 max is a measure of how much oxygen your body can use during intense exercise. The higher your VO2 max, the more oxygen you can deliver to your muscles. And that generally means you can go harder and longer during your workouts. It's a really useful measurement. Whether you're a runner, a cyclist, or like me, a rower, it can help guide your training. Now, you've probably seen those crazy videos of people on treadmills strapped to huge face-hugging masks, sprinting like their life depends on it. They're running until they look like their soul has been ripped out by the finish. That is the gold standard for testing your VO2 max. But let's get real, it's not exactly something you can do at home. But here's the good news. There is a simple way you can estimate your VO2 max at home. It's called the Queen's College Step Test, and it only takes three minutes. I'm going to show you how to take the test step by step, no pun intended, and then how to use it to calculate your VO2 max. And if you're a rower like me, I will then show you how you can use that VO2 max to predict your 2K time. So. Here's how the Queen's College Step Test works. You'll need a bench or a step that's about 16.25 inches high for men and 14 inches for women. The idea is to step up and down on this bench at a consistent pace for three minutes. For men, that means 24 steps per minute, and for women, that's 22 steps per minute. So it makes sense to use a metronome for this test. If you don't have a metronome lying around, just go to Google and search metronome, because it's got a built-in one. Set it to 96 beats per minute for men and 88 beats per minute for women. Then just step to the beat. So I've measured the height of my bench, which was 19 inches high, and uh, worked out that if I put this IKEA shelf on top of some weight plates, then that then takes me to exactly 16 and a quarter inches between this uh, shelf and the bench. So I'm ready to go in terms of setup. I've got a stopwatch on my iPad here, which I can see while I'm doing the test. I've got my metronome running in the corner, but the most important thing to do before starting the test is to warm up, okay? So spend 10 minutes doing a warm up to get your heart rate up first, because after all, this is only a three minute test. And if you just go from cold, then you're gonna have all that cardiac drift to get up to the end of the three minutes, and it may not give you an accurate reading when it comes to your VO2 max test. So I'm gonna go do my 10 minute warm up, and I will We'll see you in a second as we start the test. Ooh, that was banging. Anyway, on with the test. Don't worry, I'm not going to take you through the full three minutes. I'm just going to show you what happens. I'm stepping up and down in time to the metronome. Every five steps, I swap my leading leg to make sure that one leg wouldn't get absolutely worn out while the other one's totally fine. Make sure you do this too. But actually, this test isn't that tough. It doesn't take you anywhere near maximum output. So if you're a little scared of working really hard, this is a fantastic way to estimate your VO2 max. Just make sure to keep up with that metronome. Right, so check your pulse. So glance down at your stopwatch and count the amount of beats you feel for 15 seconds. And a quick tip, don't count a beat as you start the stopwatch. Wait for the next beat. I got 27 and a half beats in that 15 seconds, which I'm gonna round up to 28. Now, the next part is easy. I enter that 28 beats result at this web page, and boom, it gives me an estimated VO2 max. The result is based on a very general calculation. It doesn't even take into account your age. However, it is a good estimate. All right, now I've got my VO2 max. Question is, what do I do with this information? One thing you might want to check is how your score measures up for your age. The same website provides a guide to understanding your VO2 max results, showing general ranges based on age and offering some useful tips on how to improve it. 
or if you're a rower like me, you can use it to estimate your current 2K time. And I'm looking to get back into 2K racing and I haven't done a 2K in well, quite a while to be honest. So I need to set a new baseline and it's useful to have an idea of what you're capable of when you are setting that baseline. So to find this, I'm using my VO2 max result from the step test alongside the Concept2 VO2 max calculator web page. Once there, the first thing I have to do is enter my weight. I'm a little overweight for a lightweight right now. I'm up at 80 kilograms because of all this high rocks training. Then select gender and training level. And now I guess my 2K time and click the calculate VO2 max button. And then I just keep on changing the 2K time until it spits out my VO2 max result from the step test. In my case, that was 64.29 which means for me, the Concept2 calculator thinks I can do a 2K in seven minutes and two seconds. But am I actually capable of that? Well, there's only one way to find out. If you wanna find out how I get on in the 2K test, have a look at this video, and I promise you, it's quite revealing. But remember I said how important it is to warm up before this test? Well, I did the test without warming up first and my count was only 23 heartbeats afterwards. That gave me a VO2 max of 72 and a projected 2K time of 6.35. I'm definitely not there. Well, not yet anyway. If you're intrigued and you want to do the Queen's College Step Test yourself, I've got a video that you can check out. Whether you're doing the women's test or the men's test, you can step along with me. And once you've done it, let me know in the comments how you got on. Was it spot on or way off? And if you use the Concept2 pace calculator to predict your 2K time and you row a 2K, leave those numbers below too. I'd love to know what the prediction was and what your actual 2K time was. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure and check out the hundreds of row along workouts I've got up here and all of my technique tip videos. Until until then, row well, be well, bye bye.